I'm Andreas Haller. I did my PhD at the University of Zurich three years ago, and I'm now an assistant professor in beautiful Bergen in Norway. And today, I'm going to take you on a journey into the exciting world of pension reforms. So, we are getting older and older. In the last 100 years, life expectancy increased by more than 30 years in Europe. That's generally fantastic news for you and for me, but it's very bad news for our pension system. To illustrate how bad the news are, um, I'm showing you two figures. Here you can see the population pyramid in Europe in 1950. So the population pyramid just shows you the distribution by age in the population. In 1950, that really looks like a pyramid, meaning that there are more young individuals than old individuals. Now, 100 years later, by 2050, that's projected to look very differently. The population, uh, the population pyramid loses its shape, and it looks much more like a mushroom than a pyramid. And that's a problem for our pension systems, especially our pay-as-you-go pension system. Because in a pay-as-you-go pension system, the currently young generation pays the pension of the currently old generation. Now, in 1950, when we started introducing these pension systems, this worked perfectly fine, because for each individual above age 65, we had six individuals in the working age. By 2050, that ratio is down to 1.7. So less than two individuals in the working age for each individual above age 65. And so by just looking at, at these two figures, it becomes crystal clear that we have to reform our pension systems. And every policymaker around the globe understands this. The key question is how we should do it. And that's what I'm going to talk about. And kind of the common response is that we just make people work longer and that's going to fix the problem. Or as the economists put it here, 70 or bust why the retirement age has to go up. So now, um, here you can see the four most common pension reforms that we did in the last 10, 20 years. So if you want to reform the pension system, what you could do is you could, for instance, increase the early retirement age. That's the earliest age you can claim. You increase that, people can't claim, early, can't claim as early anymore, so they have to work longer, that's going to help. You can increase the normal retirement age. That's the age where you get the full pension. And so if you shift that up, you change the incentives to work longer or you reduce pensions for people who claim earlier. You could also just reduce the generosity. So just pay lower pensions. That will help too. Or you could change the actual fairness, meaning that you introduce penalties for claiming early, paying lower pensions for early claimers, and maybe introduce a bonus if you work longer. So we have seen all these four reforms in the last 10, 20 years in Europe. That's a very unexhaustive list of, of countries. We have done this several times. But the key question that remains is, like, which of these reforms works best? Or are there other reforms that might work even better? And so that's the question I'm after. And after having worked on this very question for the last five years, I have a very simple and very short answer. And the answer is, we don't know yet. But in the next three minutes, I'm going to tell you what I learned in the last five years and provide a quick outlook on what we don't know and what I think could work better than those four reforms. OK, so that's the, that's the slide where I try to explain to you in one minute how an economist think about a pension reform. OK, for now, just think about any pension reform as just taking away $1 from a retiree. If you increase the early retirement age, you're going to take away $1 from people who retire early. If you cut pension levels across the board, you take away $1 from all retirees. And now here's a trade-off if you take away $1. On the benefit side, you're going to save $1, and so that's going to uh, reduce the burden on our pension system. On top of that, we might expect that if you reduce the generosity of the pension system, that people delay retirement, they don't go as early, they work longer, they pay more payroll taxes on the way, and so there's an additional benefit of people changing their behavior. And so in total, if you take away that $1, um, you increase kind of fiscal revenue by what I call the multiplier of the reform. That just measures the total fiscal impact of taking away $1. That's the benefit side of a pension reform. Now on the cost side, if you take away $1, that $1 was also valuable to the retiree who no longer has that $1. That's what I simply call for now the social value of the dollar. It's an extremely complicated object. There's no way to explain this in three minutes or in 40 minutes. So 
let's just leave it like that. That's just measuring how valuable we think that $1 in the hand of the retiree is. And so if you would know these two quantities, the multiplier, the social value of the dollar, uh, you could figure out whether a particular reform was a good idea or a bad idea. So if uh, benefits exceed costs, if the multiplier is larger than the social value of the dollar, this was a good reform. If it's the other way around, it was a bad reform. And so now the good news is that we can actually measure the multiplier of different reforms in the data. That has been most of my last five years, just digging through five different pension reforms in Austria, trying to figure out what the multiplier is for different pension reforms. So what I found is that for increasing the early retirement age in Austria, you generate the multiplier of just 0.5. This comes in as a surprise, because you would think if you take away $1 through increasing the early retirement age, you would save at least $1. But my research says is, no, you save just 50 cents. And this comes about because you would think that some people just, people work longer because they can't claim any, as early anymore. Some people work longer, but other people stay longer on other benefits, like unemployment benefits. And on average, kind of the people working longer, paying more payroll taxes, and the people being more on benefits, those two effects kill each other. You would end up with a multiplier of one. But since individuals retire now early, they get higher pensions. And that kills the whole effect of the reform. And that's why you get the multiplier below one. For taking away $1 by increasing the early retirement age, you just say 50 cents. Okay? For the normal retirement age, it's too early to tell for Austria. I'm doing this in Austria. Um, the reform is going to hit next year, so we'll find out soon. What we know from the literature, increasing the early retirement age can be very effective with, with high multipliers. So these multipliers back of the envelope can be two or three. For reducing pension levels, I estimate the multiplier of 1.5. So an additional 50 cent savings from people delaying their retirement, working longer, paying more payroll taxes on the way. And actual fairness, um, so changing the penalty when you claim early has a multiplier of 1.3. So now if you look at this, uh, you still might wonder, OK, so what, which of these reforms was the right one? You're only showing me half of the equation, the multiplier. So if we do the comparison between the highest and the lowest, um, if you are a policymaker and think about, OK, I need to save money in the pension system. Should I increase the early retirement age, or should I reduce pensions? The multiplier of reducing uh, pensions is three times larger. And so you only want to increase the early retirement age if you think that $1 in the hand of an early retiree is three times less valuable than $1 in the hand of the average retiree. If you don't think that's true, then the better reform is to reduce pension levels. Okay? So that's what I've learned so far. And what I want to end with is um, if you look at these lists of, of reforms, they all target individual incentives. So what we've done so far with pension reforms is basically trying to incentivize that guy on the Harley to not ride his Harley, but work longer. Okay? There are reforms that work, but if you want people to work longer, there's, other, there's also another party involved, and that is firms. People need to want to work longer, but they also need to find a job, and somebody needs to employ them. So what, we've have, what we have ignored so far is the role of firms in the retirement decision. And I'm currently working on this, and very preliminary results uh, that are younger than two weeks, and we don't fully trust yet, but they indicate that if you change the incentives for the firms to employ older individuals, this might have infinitely large multipliers. And so the conclusion is here, maybe there are even better reforms than targeting individual incentives, targeting more the firm's incentives. And this is what I want to end on. Thank you very much.